The election is over and we have the results and it has been a, a historic election. We have for the first time a nationalist, a Republican First Minister uh, elected in the person of Michelle O'Neill. And the job now is to get to work. We need to see the immediate formation of an executive, Michelle O'Neill ratified as First Minister, and uh, an appointment of a Deputy First Minister to that position. And any tactics of delay from the DUP, any grandstanding by them, any gamesmanship by the British Government who may wish to use the North of Ireland in a bargaining chip in terms of their wider engagement with the European Union over the protocol would be clearly intolerable and must not happen. So we're here with you today after a long campaign and a historic uh, result, absolutely resolute and determined to get the job done and to ensure that everybody in a spirit of partnership gets back to work in an executive led by the first Republican First Minister in the North of Ireland, Michelle O'Neill. Well, as Mary Lou says, Kate Milafalcia to all of our returned MLAs and congratulations to you, but also to your families because as we all know, when we contest elections, it takes all that support that we have at home as well. So well done to them also. Special welcome to uh, the many media press corps who have joined us this afternoon also. So we now have had the election and the people have spoken and they've spoken very clearly in this election. The message is one of hope. It's also one of optimism for the future where political leaders work together and they make politics work. That's my commitment as a political leader and as an incoming first minister. The electorate also demand that the parties get back down to business, to elect a speaker, to sit in the assembly, to have it function, to appoint a first minister, a deputy first minister, to form a new executive, in order so that we can take the urgent decisions that are required to invest £1 billion extra in our health service, to allocate over £330 million to help people who are burdened with the struggle in cost of, rise, cost of living rises, and also to agree a programme for government and a budget. So there can be no excuses, there can be no attempt by the DUP or by anyone else to punish the public and leave workers and families high and dry now or in the time ahead. I have said that this election represents a very significant moment of change. It really is a defining moment for our politics and for all of our people. It also presents us with an opportunity, an opportunity to reimagine the relationships in this society on the basis of fairness, on the basis of equality and on the basis of social justice. As a First Minister for all, I intend to work with those from different political perspectives through partnership and not division. I will provide leadership which is inclusive, which celebrates diversity, which guarantees rights and equality for those who have been excluded, discriminated against and ignored in the past. What we want is for this Assembly, this Executive, to adopt a culture of civility, of mature politics at Stormont here, and a focus on our shared priorities. Our mission must be to deliver on the cost of living crisis that's burned down on so many people. It must be to deal with health, education, and our far-reaching improvements in our economy in order to create and sustain growth, good jobs, good wages for everyone right across our community. For me, it will be a special honour to serve as First Minister, and I also know that this comes with huge responsibility. Through word and deed, I will be a First Minister for all, faithfully serving the whole community. I was born in Cork, but I was reared in Tyrone. I'm a proud Ulster woman, and I am very proud of our place on this island, on these islands, which is a rich tapestry of languages, of heritage and culture, including the orange and green, and also the rainbow of cultures and our multiculturalism. I think the scale of what has been achieved and accomplished since the advent of the Good Friday Agreement 24 years ago has resulted in the transformation of our society and in particular our border communities. But we also have much, much more to do in order to prosper and to reach our full potential. This includes advancing peace and reconciliation and eradicating the cancer of, of sectarianism in our society. Our society has suffered for long enough. We must heal the wounds of the past. 
So in the coming times, we have much to do. Today, I have met, we have met with the British Secretary of State. I've spoken with the Taoiseach. I'll be engaging with other party leaders. And my message is clear. As Democrats, the DUP, but also the British government, must accept the, and respect the democratic outcome of this election. Brinkmanship will not be tolerated where the north of Ireland becomes collateral damage in a game of chicken with the European Commission. The responsibility for finding solutions to the protocol to make its smooth implementation lie with Boris Johnson and the EU. But make no mistake, we and our business community here will not be held to ransom. This means that applying the Good Friday Agreement in all of its parts, an Assembly Executive, North-South Ministerial Council and an East-West structure without delay and no further interruption. Our collective task is to work together to solve the problems that are facing our society. We must apply the full powers and resources of the Executive and the Assembly to address the major issues of the day facing those whom we all represent. It's time for us all, as political leaders, to have the courage to step forward with unity of purpose and determination to deliver a stable power share and coalition, one that works and mostly one that delivers. So friends, now is the time to embrace the future. We certainly have much work to do and many people to represent. The people want government and we all want change. And I am committed to both. Gourmet de Mayoga.